Hello, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. In my previous video, I, uh, I purchased this new Azato 2 inch focuser and it was back in September. And on the very first night that I was trying it out, I accidentally uh, put 12 volts into my 5 volt 4 port hub. Long story, you can watch the previous video if you want to hear about that. But uh, it uh, consequently fried my hub and it uh, fried the, uh, the USB interface in this focuser. And also my 120mm mono guide camera was, was also fried. Um, luckily, I, my QHY268M survived. I uh, have now bought a new hub, um, a powered hub. It's a 7 port USB 3, 12 volt this time, um, and it is directly powered off my Pegasus Astro power box. And uh, it is hardwired, so I can't make the mistake of. Uh, putting 12 volt connector in there. I returned my Zato focuser to Teststar. Um, they're a company in Australia in operate out of Manly Bar, New Sydney. Um, they're pretty good to deal with. I buy quite a bit of stuff through those guys. Um, I wrote them a note and told them the story. Um, they were pretty good. They actually um, shipped one of the components from Italy and, uh, and they repaired it in the shop and sent it back to me and um, to my surprise it was reasonably quick, it was only a couple of weeks and uh, it wasn't too expensive um, compared to the price of a new one anyway. Um, actually setting up the Zato focuser is not as daunting as it may seem. Um, it's really easy to get the right back focal distance because you don't have to stuff around with spaces trying to get it. You simply just move the motor focuser out until you've got your back focus, which in my case is 146 millimeters. Um, so you simply move it out so you've got that 146 millimeters to the center of your sensor. Once you've done that, um, then you focus you bring it into focus until you've got sharp stars. Um, once you've got sharp stars, you can lock the mirror off, which is the main reason I bought this, because now I don't have to, the issues of mirror flop, and it greatly reduces uh, image shifts in my images. Uh, and it makes a big difference when you're dithering and, and or even plate solving, waiting for the mirror to, um, to stop wobbling. Um, and it does make a big difference and the focus has never been better since I've used this focuser. Um, so once you've done that and you've, you've locked that off, you can then just find focus uh, by running an autofocus and obviously when you hit the most optimum, it'll automatically bring it into the perfect focal, uh, back focal distance because that's basically what focusing is, it's just getting the exact uh, length where your uh, sensor is at the optimal uh, back focal distance. For those of you who may be interested in purchasing their own Azato focuser for their SCT, which I highly recommend, I've found it fantastic. Um, a few things to consider. Once you've installed this to the back of the SCT, I mean you will need to buy an adapter plate for it and an, on the telescope end, which I think is three and a quarter inch or three and a half inch, and an adapter to whatever size image train it is that you're using. Now, you won't be able to rotate from that nut to get your, your image where you want it because it's going to hit these two locking nuts that lock the primary mirror. Unlike your old T adapter, you could simply just back that off and then adjust your whole image train, which rotated your camera to, uh, to be able to uh, frame up your image the way you want it to, you won't be able to do that. So what I've done is I've purchased a rotator here. Um, it's only 10 millimeters, so it only takes up 10 millimeters of my image train. But I've still got enough back focus distance, I think 70 mil from, the, from my camera sensor uh, to the back of the 
focus so, so I've managed to be able to get that and my off access guider and the filter wheel in with a little bit to play. Um, I won't actually show you or demonstrate that rotator because I'm currently uh, shooting a galaxy, it's a faint galaxy in the uh, grass region um, and it's NGC7424, I think it's a magnitude 12 so very faint probably beyond the capabilities of this F10 setup. Um, probably an, better to shoot this at F7 with my reducer, but uh, I tried to get go for resolution and close up detail. Um, so I've got up to about 14 hours of data now, I'll probably keep going on it. I may or may not show that image at the end of this video, depending on how I go with that target. Um, as far as the software side of the setup, um, with my, um, my focuser, I had no real issues, the driver seemed to load up okay. It integrated into Sequence Generator Pro, it was just there, once I loaded the driver I could see it. Um, the interface itself was very easy to use. Trying to get uh, the autofocus working um, was a little bit of a challenge. I know there was a formula and I've seen it on other videos, on other YouTube videos and I went looking for it, I couldn't find the formula anywhere. I did a quick scout on the internet but couldn't find it. So trial and error I come up and I worked out that with this setup, 8,000 steps um, was what I went for. So with uh, Sequence Generator Pro, it uses nine steps to create a V-curve. Um, and basically how it works is that you find the optimum steps to give you a nice V-curve from your in and your out of focus points. And then where it's, it kind of rounds off the average at the bottom to find your ideal optical um, focus point and then we'll set it from there. Um, the focuser itself um, was really fast at getting to those points and, uh, and focusing so I had no troubles there.